Therefore, it's time for a member's statements. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it was just a week ago that we were honoured to host Prince Harry in this House and welcomed his proclamation that the home for the 2017 Invictus Games will be right here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And as we cheer on our servicemen and women as they compete in Orlando, Florida this week in this year's edition of the Games, we look forward to bringing them back home, where they will compete in 12 sports, along with 600 others from 16 different countries next year. As Bronwyn Evans of the True Patriot Love Foundation noted, the Games will enable all Canadians to honour the men and women who have come face-to-face -face with the reality of sacrificing for their country. Speaker, when Prince Harry launched his first Evictus Games in London in 2014, he began a movement that has grown into the only international adaptive sporting event for wounded, injured, and ill active duty and veteran service members. And now that it has moved across the pond to Florida and next year here in Toronto, it continues to grow, drawing spectators and fans across our nations as we cheer on our heroes who have sacrificed so much. By using the power of sport to inspire, Invictus opens doors to awareness of the physical and psychological hurdles faced by those who serve our country. Speaker, the word Invictus is Latin for unconquer unconquerable or undefeated. And today I join with those here in Ontario, those in the stands in Florida, and those watching on across the world and cheering on these undefeated military athletes as they conquer their own hurdles on the road to Toronto, Invictus Games 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. Today, members of the Myelitic Encephalomyelitis Associations of Ontario are at Queen's Park. Why? Well, it's because on May 12th, it is the official awareness day for myalgic encephalomyelitis, sometimes called chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, and environmental sensitivities, also known as multiple chemical sensitivity. In late 2013, MEAO, shorter, together with the Associations of Ontario Health Centres, submitted a proposal for the Ontario Centre of Excellence in Environmental Health. From the proposal, we learned that over 580,000 people in Ontario have been diagnosed with chronic, complex, environmentally linked illnesses. That's 5% of the population of Ontario speaker. We also learned that people suffering from these conditions experience systemic barriers to getting the health care they need because diagnoses and treatment of these serious conditions are not currently available in Ontario. I believe this has to change, Speaker. A year and a half ago, the Minister of Health agreed and announced the creation of a task force. But it's been a year and a half, Speaker, and nothing has changed. These people are counting on the Minister to keep his promise and finally take action to provide effective health services to them. The time has come, Speaker, to support the Ontario Centre of Excellence in Environmental Health. Today would be a good day to start. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from the from North. Thank you, Speaker. I rise on behalf of all members of the Legislature to recognize the election of Mayor Sadiq Khan, who has just been elected to, as the Mayor of the City of London, England. <laughs> Speaker, this is an extraordinary event and, of course, a sign of the embrace of diversity and pluralism. And uh, we would like to commend not only Mir Khan on an extraordinary campaign uh, as he reached out to uh, Londoners and beyond, but also for, I think, uh, embodying the wishes of his family. Uh, who, as you know, Speaker, he is of uh, Pakistani Muslim descent, comes from a very modest household, uh, grew up in what I understand is social housing, served as a councillor, as a member of parliament federally there, and now as the mayor of the city of London. I've composed a letter to him, which I'll be sending on behalf of all members of the legislature. I'll actually sign that letter here in parliament. And of course, this election was not without its controversy, Speaker, but the usual suspects did speak in the usual way, but uh, Londoners withstood that, and I would like to uh, commend him as uh, obviously someone who supports diversity and pluralism and multiculturalism and the embrace of all humanity. So we congratulate you, Mir Khan. I officially invite you to the Legislature of Ontario and look forward to hosting you here. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I too am pleased to rise and recognize the Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Association of Ontario. 
They are here today because, as mentioned earlier, May 12th is the official awareness day for myalgic encephalomyelitis, fibromyalgia, and environmental sen sen sensitivities. Uh, these are three chronic, complex, environmentally linked illnesses that are afflicting over 580,000 Ontarians. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, back in 2013, in October, business case, a proposal was given for the Ontario Centre of Excellence in Environmental Health, was presented to the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care in order to provide the hundreds of thousands of Ontarians afflicted with these illnesses with the appropriate care and treatment they deserve. To date, the approval has not been given to the business case proposal, although the ministry has recognized the business case proposal and have announced task force would be created, the ministry has failed to do so over the last one and a half years. The task force has not been implemented and work cannot begin. Mr. Speaker, the Progressive Conservative Party urges the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care to get moving on the task force that will deliver a system of care to ensure that effective and appropriate health and social services are given to the hundreds of thousands of Ontarians' patients who suffer from these chronic, complex, environmentally linked illnesses. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Timmins, James Bay. Well, Mr. Speaker, yesterday I had the occasion, along with my federal counterpart, Charlie Angus, uh, to visit Attawapiskat as a follow-up to the ongoing crisis in that community. <clears throat> Let me just first of all say that, unfortunately, this crisis is happening in other communities as well. Uh, and may not be reported as much. Uh, but what is really clear coming out of the discussions that we had yesterday with the chief and the various members of the community and those people that work at Waha and others, which is our hospital, is that there is a real chronic underfunding of staffing that's needed to be able to deliver services in those communities. In all of our communities where we come from, there's a functioning children's aid, a functioning children's treatment center normally, a functioning hospital, mental health association, who all provide services in our communities to deal with people who are in crisis. If you live in Attawapiskat, there is not one single mental health worker to deal with kids under 18 out of Pigatano. No money to do that. When it comes to Waha, we have one worker who is a mental health worker to service the entire community. Now, I want to thank, we have the EMAT team there, and the government has seen fit to extend that for 30 days in order to provide respite to the Waha staff so that we can provide some services uh, during this immediate crisis. But what is becoming more and more clear is that we need to make sure that we provide the resources, the training and support necessary to build up the services in that community so community members themselves can staff those positions, be part of their community, be part of functional agencies that are able to deal with those issues in the community on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm uh, pleased once again to, uh, to co-sponsor the myalgic and Seth Omalaitis Association Ontario, registered Ontario charity, who are here today May 10th because Thursday, May 12th, of course, is the official awareness day for magic myalgic and Seth Omalaitis, sometimes known as chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia and environmental sensitivities, also known as multiple chemical sensitivity, which are three chronic complex environmentally linked illnesses which affect almost 600,000 people in Ontario. Uh, MEIO supports the hundreds of thousands of patients in Ontario who have complex, chronic, environmentally linked illnesses. As pointed out numerous times over the years, these patients experience system, systemic barriers to getting the health care they need because diagnosis and treatment of these very serious conditions are seriously lacking in some sections of Ontario. Indeed, most areas in Ontario health care for these illnesses is non-existent. I uh, would like to just also mention, if I could, Mr. Speaker, through you, uh, a lot of us will urge the uh, Minister of Health and Long-Term Care to to implement the task force uh, that was mentioned earlier and that has patients at the centre of the process and leads a health system that meets the needs of these patients so that hundreds of thousands of Ontario suffering from chronic, complex, environmentally linked illnesses can at long last receive the diagnosis and treatment that they really need. And don't forget, we'll see everyone today over in rooms 228 and 230 at 4.30 p.m. You're also invited to continue wearing the MEAO's ribbons, which we put on this morning. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank everyone who took the time to respond to the survey in my recent newsletter. 
I genuinely enjoyed reading each response and sharing the concerns of my constituents with the legislature. The biggest concern for my constituents are the economy and jobs, government spending, seniors' issues, and taxes. People continue to tell me that the cost of living is rising in Winds, Ontario. 94% of the people that responded said that their family has been impacted by the increasing cost of hydro. 67% of the respondents said that impact has been significant. In fact, one constituent closed their hydro bill, $700 for a single month. They told me they can't afford the mandatory pension plan. 78% of the people oppose it. And while cost is going up, services aren't improving. 87% said that health care hasn't improved over the last 10 years. They told me about loved ones that are waiting for cataract surgeries, knee surgeries, hip replacements, and occupational therapy. Many of them said they are still having trouble finding a family doctor. People see huge government spending, but not enough of that money is going to the services that they need. Again, I want to thank everyone who took the time to respond to the survey and share their concerns. I will continue to share their stories to show the real impact this of this government's policies. And I will continue to push for the things that matter to the people of Oxford. Keeping the cost of living affordable, creating jobs and health care that we can depend on. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Other member statements. The member from uh, Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to stand and share a few words about the 60th Jubilee of St. Moretti Gritty Church that took place in my riding of Scarborough Southwest this past April 16th. The Mass was presided over by Cardinal Thomas Collins, Archbishop of Toronto, and notable figure in the Catholic Church. The church, which takes its name from one of the youngest canonized saints, has long been a spiritual and inspirational pillar in the Scarborough community. I was fortunate enough to attend the service, and I could tell from the reaction of the parishioners' faces just how much it meant to have Cardinal Collins and other members of the Catholic clergy present and involved in this very special Mass. Mr. Speaker, I've personally attended Mass at this church for more than a decade, and have witnessed the incredible growth of the church community and the way in which it has brought people of Scarborough Southwest together for their spiritual fulfillment. Celebrating a 60th Jubilee is an exceptional accomplishment. I'd like to extend my warmest wishes to the clergy, Father Edwin Galea, Father Elias Cicciati, and Reverend Raymond Bilardo, as well as all church members, and to thank the church for its 60 years contributions to Scarborough Southwest and the surrounding area. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further member statements? The member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to recognize May as South Asian Heritage Month. Mr. Speaker, across our diverse province, Ontarians everywhere are celebrating South Asian culture and history, and there's certainly a lot to celebrate. Mr. Speaker, Ontario is home to more than one million South Asians. In fact, our province boasts the largest South Asian population in all of Canada. This dynamic community has contributed immeasurably to the fabric of Ontario in business, science, arts, medicine, and more, and we are all stronger for it. South Asian Heritage Month is a time to celebrate our diversity and our community's rich traditions. There are festivals, exhibits, and ceremonies happening throughout the month of May. In fact, just this weekend, I attended a South Asian festival in Halton. There were games and contests for the kids, entertainment for the adults, and, of course, amazing food for everyone. It was a fantastic and colourful celebration of South Asian culture and traditions. South Asians come from many countries and speak many languages. These events are a shining example of Ontario's multicultural society. I want to encourage everyone here and across the province to go out and celebrate this community's cultures and backgrounds and enjoy the many events happening this month, and one of which all South Asians, a happy and meaningful South Asian Heritage Month. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. I thank all members for their comments.